Father, we thank you for the service today. Thank you for the joy of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Everything you have bestowed upon our lives. In the day, in the night, whatever is happening, we say, thank you, Lord. Accept our praises in Jesus' name. And as we come today, speak to every heart. Let us know you more, serve you more, and be blessed more by you in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. Bless every family. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the gracious, grateful people of God said, Today we're coming to the Psalms 100 verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And then in verse 2, it tells us, serve the Lord with gladness, not with gloomy long faces, but serve the Lord with gladness, with joy, with happiness, with cheerfulness. Come before his presence was singing. And then in verse 3, it tells us, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and we not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Then it tells us in verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, not with complaint, not with sorrow, not with kind of uh, downheartedness, but you enter into the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. And then in verse 5, he tells us, for the Lord is good. The Lord is good. To me, the Lord is good. To me, the Lord is good. Every day, that will be your testimony in Jesus' name. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endure to all generations. Even today, in this generation, even today, in our time, the mercy of the Lord continues, the truth of the Lord continues, the grace of the Lord continues, and the goodness of the Lord will continue till the end of your life in Jesus' name. He will bless you today. He will bless me today. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. In Psalm 103, verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. All that is within me, my thoughts, within me, my mind, within me, my heart, within me, and all the things that come out of me, they must be praising the Lord and blessing the Lord every time. Then in verse 2 it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then it tells us in verse 3, it says, Who forgiveth? all thine iniquities how many how many iniquities will the lord forgive all and healeth all thy diseases how many diseases will the lord uh, heal can he heal cancer i said can he heal tuberculosis and the thing that wants to claim somebody's life can he heal you today it will heal in jesus name and then in verse 4, it tells us, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Verse 5, he renews, he satisfies the mouth with good things. It will satisfy your life with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. It will renew your life, renew your youth in Jesus' name. 
Look at Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. He tells us, He brought them forth also with silver and gold. He brings you forth anywhere you go, anything you touch. He'll bring you forth with silver and gold in Jesus' name. And there was not one feeble person among that tribe. Any feeble person there? Any sick person there? It takes all our feebleness, all our sicknesses, all our weaknesses. It takes everything away. It will do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. Not one feeble person among their tribes. Today we're looking at believers' benefits from the gracious benefactor. Our God, our creator, our maker, our deliverer, our sustainer, our provider is our benefactor. And it's a gracious benefactor. By grace, he benefits our lives. By grace, he provides for our lives. And he does not discriminate. It's an impartial God. And he's a gracious God. He's a gracious benefactor. And then we have the benefits coming from the cross and coming from Christ and coming from the provision and the promises of the Lord. And those promises today, they are fulfilled in your life. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the character and the consecration of all truthful believers. A believer. When God makes you a believer and He touches your life, when God makes you a believer and He converts your soul, He puts something within you that loves the truth, that upholds the truth, that tells the truth, that embraces the truth. And then we have the character and the consecration of all truthful believers. Number two, the compromise and corruption of thoughtless backsliders. We're reading about the story of the children of Israel. The Bible tells us their history. And then the Psalms tells us and paints the picture of those people in the, in the wilderness. They, were, they compromised their faith a lot of times and they corrupted themselves because they were thoughtless. They were thoughtless of his provision they were thoughtless of his promises. They were thoughtless of his dealings with them. They were thoughtless about the good things the Lord has done for them. It's only when somebody is thoughtless, he backslides. When he's thoughtless, he becomes compromising. When he's thoughtless, he corrupts himself. Number two, the compromise and corruption of thoughtless backsliders. Number three, the condition of covenant with the timeless benefactor. It's not dealing with time. From eternity to eternity, from everlasting to everlasting, is the same. And the goodness of the Lord in the past generation is the same goodness He maintains even today as a timeless, eternal, everlasting benefactor. The condition of covenant with the everlasting timeless benefactor let's come to number one number one is the character and consecration of all truthful believers god will make you a truthful believer a righteous believer an honest believer and you will be a believer everywhere you go anywhere you are the character the commitment the consecration of a real believer will be reflected and demonstrated in your life in jesus name and let's look at psalm 101 reading from verse 2 psalm 101 reading from verse 2 i will behave myself wisely in a perfect way Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And then he tells us in verse 3 there, in verse 3 he says, I will search no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave 
unto me. As we look at this section, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the consecration of a true believer. The commitment, the consecration of a true believer. He says, I will. This is what I will do. This is my expression of absolute surrender unto the Lord. The consecration of a true believer. Number two, the character of a transformed believer. That life has been transformed. When you are created by God and you are wonderfully and fearfully made and now you pass through the hand of God again and He recreates you. What a wonder comes. It touches your heart. It touches your life. It touches every part within and every part all around. And then He gives you the character of a transformed believer. Then number three is the companionship of a trustable believer. A believer believer you can lean on a believer that is trustworthy a believer that is trustable that believer has companionship and he has some people around him that are trustworthy as well number one is the consecration of a true believer look at psalm 101 reading from verse 1 in psalm 101 verse 1 i will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee O Lord will I sing the psalmist remembers the mercy of God and he says I will sing of the mercy of the Lord that's the mercy that converted us that's the mercy that was gracious to us that's the mercy that took us out of the wilderness of sin and brings us into the wonder of his salvation I will sing of the mercy and judgment of unto thee, O Lord, I will sing. Look at the beginning of the verse, I will sing. Look at the end of the verse, I will sing. He made up his mind. He said, nothing will take the praise of God from my mouth. That's why he says in Psalm 57 verse 7, Psalm 57 verse 7, he tells us about his determination about his diligence and about his commitment and about his confession look at this psalm 57 verse 7 my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed i will sing i will sing my heart is fixed the storm the wind may be blowing my heart is fixed it might appear people expect you to be crying but you made up your mind my heart is fixed i will sing and the things may be upside down it may not be as you expect but you make up your mind and this is your consecration my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed I will sing and give praise. Look at Psalm 108 verse 1. In Psalm 108 verse 1, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing. He said that before. He's saying that again. You see, there are people, when they're in the church, they say, Oh Lord, I will worship you. I will praise you. I will sing. Whatever is happening. And then something begins to happen. And they cannot sing again. Where is your heart? My heart is speaks to God. I will sing and give praise even with my glory, with the glorious things and possession in my life. I will sing and give praise and my heart is speaks. Look at Psalm 112. Psalm 112, we're reading from verse 7. It tells us, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be afraid of bad news. He shall not be afraid of the plot of the enemy he shall not be afraid of uh, you know whatever he hears and whatever he reads that they are coming they are coming they are coming he said he shall not be afraid of evil tidings somebody there will not be afraid you will worship the Lord without fear his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord your heart is fixed and all the time you are trusting in the Lord there will be no disappointment in your life in Jesus name there will be no disappointment in my life. I said there will be no disappointment in my life. It will fulfill all his promises in your life in Jesus' name. That's the consecration of a true believer. Let's look at number two now. Number two is the character of a transformed believer. 
when we say somebody has salvation that means somebody has conversion salvation conversion they're the same conversion when you convert something like you convert, you know, raw papers and the papers that have been, you know, cut off from the printers. And then you take to the people who convert, they convert those useless uh, cut offs into something very useful. That's conversion. And when your life has been worthless, your life has been colorless, your life has been, uh, you know, godless without character. And then you come to God and there is salvation, there is conversion conversion your life will be beautiful and that's the conversion it makes a transformation and that's what we're talking about the character of a transformed believer look at Psalm 101 reading from verse 2 I will be here myself now that I'm converted, I will behave myself. Now that I'm born again, I will behave myself. Now that I'm transformed, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house in a perfect, with a perfect heart. It's telling us the character, the character of a transformed believer is not only in the assembly. It is not only in the congregation, anywhere, everywhere we go, that conversion still abides. Come back to my illustration of those uh, waste uh, paper that is converted to maybe toilet roll or something like that. Anywhere that converted paper goes remains the same. The same thing with you as a child of God. If you're truly transformed, if you're truly saved, if you're truly born again, your life is the same whether in church, in the congregation, in the assembly, or in the privacy of your house. Whether you are with the believers or with some believers, anywhere you find yourself, you'll behave yourself wisely with it in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And then he says in verse 3, he says, I will put, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I shall, it shall not cleave to me. When you are really converted, God puts a hatred in your heart for whatever God hates. You are converted, you are now a child of God and you are reflecting the life of Christ. Because of that, anything he hates, you hate. He hates sin. He hates compromise. He hates corruption. He hates evil. He hates all those things that people do behind the curtain in the secrecy of their place. God hates them. And if you're a child of God, you will hate everything that God hates. That's why he says, I'm converted now. I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4 a forward heart shall depart from me I will not know a wicked person I will not investigate them I will not say why is that wicked person succeeding why is the wicked person always having a jolly time I will not even think about that I will not know I will not recognize a wicked person and then in verse 5 he tells us who so privately privately slandereth his neighbor him will I cut off what he's simply saying is there are people that trade in gossip have you heard have you heard about so and so about so and so he says i cut off relationship from them the only thing they talk about they don't talk about their own fault they don't talk about their own life they don't talk about their own need it, what they are talking about is not helpful they are talking about this they are talking about that who so privately slandereth his neighbor him will i cut off him that has an high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. That's the character of a righteous person. And I pray that that same character will be reflected in all our lives in Jesus' name. Did I hear an amen?
Look at number three now. Number three is the companionship of a trustable believer. A believer who wants to have and remain a believer, he has companions around him and the companions, look at their description. In Psalm 101 verse 6, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. We cannot go through life uh, lonely without having people around us. You want to have friends that are faithful, that will support your vision, that will support your ideas, that will support your goal and everywhere you want to go they want to help you they don't want to destroy you they know your hope they know your desire and they know your aspiration they know that in life you want to be everything God wants you to be and those friends and those companions they come to you they have a perfect heart they have a faithful heart they want to serve the Lord and they want to serve you as well they are not there to take anything out of you they're there to contribute to your life and make you the happy cheerful prosperous progressive person you ought to be friends that will uh, exalt Christ in your life and not destroy the goal of your life the Lord will give you the wisdom to search for them and to stay with them and abide with them in Jesus name my I shall be upon the faithful of the land. Think about David. David added, you know, a Saul with 3,000 soldiers after him. And David needed friends and companions that could be trusted in the day and trusted in the night. That's why he said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. They, that they may dwell with me. I need them that they may dwell with me they are helpful that they may dwell with me he that walketh in a perfect way he shall serve me i pray that god will give us wisdom that as we go through life we'll go through life with faithful friends helpful friends and gracious friends in jesus name we're looking at Psalm 119, verse 60. I make haste and I delayed not to keep thy commandments. He said, I'm not just wanting friends that are perfect. I want to be perfect too. I'm not just having friends that are good and gracious. I want to be good and gracious too. And so I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. And then in verse 63, verse 63, it tells us, I am a companion of all them that fear the a companion, a friend, associate, acquaintance of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts, the companionship of a trustable believer. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the compromise and corruption of thoughtless backsliders. It is not good to backslide. I will not backslide. I said, I will not backslide. You know why? Because the Lord can come for you at any time. And if he comes when you are in a backsliding position, then you are lost forever. Now, we need to understand when we read the Psalms and when we read the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, you will see that God is merciful. And you will hear, he forgiveth all their transgressions. But you must look at the whole story. When it says he forgives them, he's talking about them as a nation, as a nation. And then he brought them out of Egypt and he took them through uh, the, the, the wilderness and they landed in the promised land as a nation. But... The people that sinned in that nation, like when they spoke with their mouth and serpents came out and beat many of them, many of them died. But the nation still remained. 
all those who died with the biting of the serpent because they died in their iniquity and they died in their sin they didn't get to heaven they didn't get to the promised land and so you must understand when it says they sinned and he forgave them they as a nation they sinned and the people that really remained in that sin they died they didn't get to heaven is the nation remaining that got to the promised land so always remember that so all these things that we read don't just say you forgive them you will forgive me we don't know we don't know because we know people who sinned and they died in that sin you remember Achan he died in that sin you remember Ananas and Sapphira they died in that sin the people that remain as a nation the people that remain as a congregation God will forgive those who remain alive and they can be forgiven but the people that just go like that suddenly unto man it's appointed once to die and after this the judgment that's why we're considering now the compromise and corruption of thoughtless backsliders three things we're looking at number one the corruption that provoked the lord the corruption that provoked the lord number two the condemnation for provoking the lord those who provoked the lord the condemnation that came upon them number three the command not to provoke the lord he has commanded us not to provoke the lord we're coming to Psalm 106 now and that's point number one the corruption that provokes the Lord Psalm 106 verse 7 our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt they remembered not the multitude of thy mercies but provoked him at the sea even at the Red Sea. And then he tells us in verse 13, in verse 13 it says, They soon forgot his words, and they waited not for his counsel. All the people that forget God, they will come to judgment, and he throws them into hell. And it says, they soon forgot his words. They waited not for his counsel. That's what provoked him in verse 14. It says, verse 14, but they lost it exceedingly in the wilderness and they tempted God in the desert. In verse 15, it tells us, it says, and he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their souls he judged them so don't have the idea he forgive them he'll forgive me and whatever i do anywhere i put my mouth anywhere i put my feet any deception any lie any corruption no no problem god will forgive me yes god will if you have chance to repent there are people that do not have chance to repent and they die like that and it says leanness into their souls look at verse 16 in verse 16 the envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron the saint of the Lord look at verse 19 in verse 19 it says they made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image that's what provoked the Lord they corrupted their lives and they provoked the Lord in verse 20 it tells us Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. Verse 21, then he tells us they forgot God their Savior. They forgot God their Savior. All the people that forgot God their Savior and they died in that forgetfulness which is their foolishness. If they perished in that forgetfulness, they are not in Abraham's bosom now. They are not in heaven now. But the nation that remained, that still went on, 
of those that of the age of 20 and below when they left Egypt, they go to the land of Canaan. So as a nation, he didn't totally wipe them off. As he told Moses, he will do. He still got the younger generation into the promised land. But the older generation that provoked the Lord, they perished in the wilderness. I pray you will not perish. I pray I will not perish. The Lord keep you from corruption in Jesus' name. And look at Psalm 78. We're looking at Psalm 78, verse 40. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Verse 41, it says, Yea, yes, they turned back and tempted God and delimited the Holy One of Israel. It tells us in verse 42, it says, They remembered not a sign, not the day when he delivered them from the enemy. You see, that's Old Testament. Can there be corruption like that in the New Testament? Look at Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 19. Second Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. There are some preachers, they promise other people liberty. You can do as you please. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of love. Go and read the Psalms to see His mercy and endure it forever. Yes. His mercy endure it forever of the generation remaining but the people that provoked him with their corruption they died in the wilderness but the mercy of God still continues for those who are alive who repent and don't want to seek the face of the Lord but these promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage and then in verse 20 we're told for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein that's backsliding they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them the mercy of God still continues with those who repent. The mercy of the Lord still continues to those who abide in the Lord. And the grace of God abides in them. But for the people who yield to corruption, it says the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I pray your latter end will be better, will be brighter, will be higher in Jesus' name you will not join corruption and corruptors your life will be in the grace of god and in godliness for the rest of your life in jesus name let's look at number two here number two is the condemnation for provoking the lord the condemnation for provoking the lord in psalm 106 reading from verse 24 yea they despised the pleasant land they believed not his word they despised the pleasant land they despised the promised land they despised the provision of the promise the lord has given them do you know there are people that do that today they despise heaven they despise glory they despise the other side that when we leave this world is uh -huh. holiness without holiness no man shall say the lord heaven 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 i am hungry you're talking about heaven i don't have clothes you're talking about heaven they don't praise god when there's no food they don't praise God in the famine. They don't praise God when there is no clothing. They don't praise God when they don't have all the things of this world. They are centered on the things of the world. We praise the Lord and glorify His name and we thank Him even when there's no food and it is in the praising of the Lord, food will come. Clothing will come. Job will come. Uh, am I hearing any amen there? Yeah. And wife, wife, welcome. 
I pray for you that this year will not pass you by. Osman will come. I pray for you that this year will not pass you by. But you know, but you know, frowning makes us ugly. Being gloomy makes us ugly. You're looking for wife, you're looking for husband, and then anywhere you are outside, the way you carry yourself, you're never happy, you're never cheerful. Even if somebody is to know the will of God to you, he said, this man has too much burden. I have burden, he has burden, and he carries his burden everywhere. I don't want to join him, I don't want to join her, so that our burdens will multiply. Cheer up, the Lord is on your side. Cheer up, good things are coming to you. When you're always cheerful, it's easy to see the will of God to somebody who's always cheerful, always happy. You don't have anything at home. It's like you have the whole world. You're relying on the promises of God and you say, I know God will provide for me. I, I, I know God will provide for me and will provide i said it will provide carry your cross with a smile and whatever is happening in your life don't let the devil see you crying all the time the devil is wicked he likes to see people crying all the time and when you cry and cry and cry he'll give you more things to cry about the devil will not see me cry Say it for yourself. Enemies will not see me cry. You see the smile of God on your face every time. And life will be better. If you are sick now, it will heal you. If you are oppressed, it will relieve you in Jesus' name. God made you, not for Satan to laugh at you, he made you so that you'll be a trophy in the crown of the Lord in Jesus' name. But they despise the pleasant land, they believe not his word. Look at verse 25, it says in verse 25, but murmured in their tents and hearkened not to the voice of the Lord. In verse 26, it tells us, therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness. You understand now, those people that murmured and those people that complained and those people that said who is God what has he done what did he take us out of Egypt the mercy of God did not continue with them only the people that said we're grateful look at where we are now and look at what we have now and look at what God has provided those are the people that had the mercy of God with them all the days of their lives but they were overthrown. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, it said to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. In verse 28, it tells us they joined themselves also unto Baal Peor and ate sacrifices of the dead. You see what they did and how God brought condemnation upon them in verse 29. In verse 29, thus they provoked him to anger. They provoked him to anger with their inventions. And the plague break in upon them. First Corinthians chapter 10, we're reading from verse 5. In First Corinthians chapter 10, reading from verse 5, see what warning the Lord is giving us because of those people that came under condemnation. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, but they were overthrown in the wilderness. In verse 6, it says, now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lose after evil things as they also lost it, so that we don't provoke the Lord. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 tells us, neither be ye idolaters as were some of them 
as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink, and they rose up to play. Verse 8 tells us, it says, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them also committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. All those people that committed fornication, they didn't have chance to repent and they fell, they died in one day, 23,000 and other people died, died later. They died in condemnation. They were not uh, restored. They perished. They are not in heaven. They went to hell. And the Lord is warning us that we should not be like them so that the sudden death the sudden destruction and the eternal judgment that came upon them will not come upon us. In verse 9, he tells us in verse 9, Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and they were destroyed of serpents. Verse 10 tells us, Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured. Neither murmur ye at some of them murmured. You see, there are people, they do not understand that murmuring is sin. They think everybody does it, not everybody. Everybody does not do it. Even in the land of Israel, everybody did not murmur. But those who murmured, they were dealt with in severe judgment by the Lord. And he's saying that since we have seen their history, how they corrupted themselves, how they provoked the Lord, and the condemnation that came upon them, he says, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Then verse 11 brings the lesson for us. He says, now, all these things happened unto them for examples and they are reaching for our admonition for our learning for our encouragement for our warning upon whom the ends of the world are come look at number three there number three is the command not to provoke the lord the command not to provoke the lord i will not provoke the lord now understand uh, you want something from somebody and as you get to him uh, and what you want is very important to you and you know he can provide what you are asking for and as you get to him uh, you know what he doesn't like you know what he hates and you know what infuriates him although before you ask what you are asking uh, you provoke him and you make him unhappy you make him sad and you come and you show that you don't love him you don't respect him you have not even made your request and you are provoking him after provoking him if you ask for the request will he grant it i can't hear you if what you are asking from him is very important to you if the favor you demand from him is very important to you if what you are asking that he will give you will make you happy and will make your life prosperous and will make your life fulfilled the one thing you don't want to do is to provoke him don't provoke the lord because he's the one who can answer your prayer he's the one who can bless you and because of that you don't want to do anything anytime that will provoke the lord and then when you come to pray you say uh -huh, you know how to ask you know how to demand you know how to wish for this and that but you are a provocation all the time that's why he commands us not to provoke the lord in exodus chapter 23 we're looking at verse 20 exodus chapter 23 we're reading from verse 20 behold i send an angel capital a that's the lord before his incarnation 
it says behold i send an angel before thee to keep thee you know in thy way in the way and to bring thee into the place which i have prepared is the one to bring us to the place that he has prepared and to fulfill all the promises of god in our lives look at verse 21 in verse 21 beware of him obey his voice provoke him not you want him to guide you and lead you provoke him not you want him to show you the way the way into the abundance of the provision of god for you provoke him not you want him to bring the fulfillment of the promises of god into your life into your family provoke him not you trust him you depend upon him to answer your prayer provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him look at verse 22 in verse 22 but if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak through him then i will be an enemy unto thine enemies i will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries no amen verse 25 look at verse 25 in verse 25 it says and you shall serve the lord your god you'll not provoke him and he shall bless thy bread and thy water there's no provocation and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee and then in verse 26 he tells us in verse 26 he's telling us that he will fulfill the, the number of our days he will fulfill all the promises he has given us because we avoid provoking him we avoid tempting him and we avoid doing anything that will set a wall of demarcation between us and him provoke him not so that the promises of the lord will be yes and amen in your life amen in my life there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of my days he will fulfill. The number of my days he will fulfill. And he will fulfill all the promises of God in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is the condition of covenant was the timeless, eternal, everlasting, ever living benefactor. We're coming to Psalm 103 and we're reading from verse 17. Psalm 103, reading from verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Look at what follows. The mercy of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the faithfulness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him upon them that's the condition upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto their children's children then in verse 18 he tells us to such as keep his covenant that's the condition there's a condition for us to have the benefits of the covenant to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them and then he tells us in verse 19 verse 19 tells us he says the lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his and his government is a kingdom is rule rulers over all when you see those conditions of the lord and you see those conditions that god himself has stated in his word that yes he has a covenant and that covenant provides everything you need all the benefits you need and all the goodness you need but then he says it is for the people that fear him it is for the people that love him it is for the people that obey his commandments when you then get more of the grace of god and the goodness of god in your life 
life and you be again to the Lord, then you will see that you are gracious, you are grateful, and you are earnest in asking for and receiving the blessings of the Lord. It will not fail in your life. It will not fail when you pray. And when you pray, it will answer you in Jesus' name. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and he sits on the throne of mercy, on the throne of grace. And because you are fulfilling the condition that he has stated in his word, because of that you come boldly before him to receive grace and mercy from the Lord and he will fulfill that for you in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 105 verse 7, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. No matter where you are in the whole wide world, the Lord can see you there. And as you fulfill the condition that he has given, his grace, his mercy, his love, his provision and promises will be yours in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8. He tells us in verse 8, he says, he has remembered his covenant forever. For those who are covenant keepers, for those who are faithful, and for those who are absolutely surrendered unto him, he has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And then he says in verse 9, in verse 9, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. In verse 10, that and he confirmed the same unto Jacob for a love and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. We're coming to Psalm 106, reading from verse 45. Psalm 106, verse 45, and he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercy. For those who remained alive who had not been swept off by the wave and the ocean of the judgment of God into a Christ-like eternity, godless eternity. For those who are still alive, he remembers the multitude of his mercies. Then in the final verse there, verse 48, blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting and let all the people say amen, amen. praise ye the Lord and I pray that every action of your life every behavior in your life every comportment that you manifest will be a praise and glory unto the Lord in Jesus name but looking at three things here number one the condition of benefits in the kingdom the condition of benefits in the kingdom not in the in the covenant number two the completeness of blessings in the covenant the covenant is complete everything you will ever need for spiritual life for natural life for family life for your professional life and for just your safety, your security, everything you need, everything is provided in the covenant. And I pray that as you pray, the Lord will reveal his favor and the benefits unto you in Jesus' name. Number three, the confirmation through the blood of the covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ is the greatest blood, is the highest of the highest value. All the blood of the animals they shed in the Old Testament did not have as much value. Put them all together in all those decades and centuries and generations and then compare that with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has the highest value in the mind of God in the court of heaven and because of the blood of that covenant all the blessings through the blood will come to your life in Jesus name look at number one number one is the condition of benefits in the covenant the condition of benefits in the covenant in Psalm 103 we're looking at verse 17 again Psalm 103 verse 17 but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him that's the condition of the benefits upon them 
that fear him and uh, his righteousness unto their children his children look at verse 18 in verse 18 it tells us to search as keep his covenant they respect God enough to keep his covenant they love God enough to keep his covenant they honor God enough to keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them that's the condition he has given and that's the condition is looking for you are praying first of all tell him to give you grace to be obedient to his to his commandment and to his covenant and it is to those who are obedient to him he will give the fulfillment of his promises let's come now to number two there number two the completeness of blessings in the covenant everything you need is provided for everything i need is provided for sunshine in your life happiness in your life joy in your life provision in your life in jesus name deuteronomy chapter 7 we're reading from verse 12 deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 12 wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to the to these judgments and keep and do them that's the condition if ye hearken and keep and do them that the lord thy god shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is where unto thy fathers look at verse 15 in verse 15 it tells us and the lord will take away from thee and the lord will take away from thee and the lord will take away from me say it for yourself and the lord will take away from me all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of egypt which thou knowest upon thee but he will lead them upon them that hate thee any amen sickness gone disease is gone and the lord fulfill his good pleasure in your life in jesus name galatians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 13 galatians chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 13 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law redeemed from the curse of the law causes all cancelled out of your life infirmities all taken away from your life disaster all taken away from your life in jesus name because christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us he has borne all our causes he has taken all our causes and that the curse from the old testament of the of the curse from the village of the curse from anybody behind the curtain that hates you no curse will be attached to your life anymore in jesus name for it is written because said is everyone that hangeth on a tree and then in verse 14 it says that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith i will receive the promise i have received the promise all the promises of god will be yes and amen in your life in jesus name on the basis of the covenant look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says brethren i speak after the manner of men though it be but a man's covenant yet if it be confirmed no man disannulleth or addeth thereto it will not be cancelled in your life every promise of god today coming upon your life in jesus name let's come to number three now number three is the confirmation through the blood of the covenant confirmation somebody help me shout confirmation 
in your life today confirmation in your family today confirmation everything god has promised and provided confirmation in your life in jesus name look at psalm 105 verse 10 and confirmed the same unto joseph for a law unto jacob for a law you understand when god made that covenant with abraham jacob was not yet born he was not yet here on earth and yet god made the covenant with abraham and then abraham lived cold and then he died but the covenant remained and as jacob came even though he was not alive when the covenant was made with abraham it was confirmed in his life you know what I'm telling you? You were not here when Jesus died on the cross and then the covenant for salvation, the covenant for healing, the covenant for deliverance, the covenant that has provided, when he provided it in his blood, you were not here. He died, he was buried, he rose again, he's in heaven now, and to you on this glorious day, the Lord confirms the covenant and it will be done in your life it says he confirmed the same unto jacob for a law and to israel for an everlasting covenant everlasting covenant everlasting covenant now i'm asking you an obvious question since that time has everlasting ended I said, since that time has everlasting ended, everlasting is still continuing today. And because of that, the benefit of the everlasting covenant is upon your life today. Now, let's come to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, I am reading now from verse 1. In Psalm 103, looking at verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul. Will your soul bless the Lord today? Because he fulfills his covenant, because he blesses you, because he forgives all sins, because he heals all sicknesses, because he provides all the provision of Calvary upon your life, your soul will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Anything you don't have, Calvary has provided. Anything you are praying for, Calvary has provided. And when you are praying and when you are seeking the Lord, don't forget, forget not all his benefits. Look at a few of them, verse 3. It says in verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. What does he forgive? Whatever you have done in the past, any time, as you come to the Lord and say, Lord, you say, yes, I know what you're asking for, and it will forgive all trespasses, all iniquities. It will save your soul if you are not yet saved. If you're backsliding, it will restore you. If you're a child of God, but you are sorry for something, you know, it will forgive and overlook in Jesus' name. Who healeth, tell me. Who healeth, tell me. Say it for yourself. Now, who healeth? When? Now, he healeth, he healeth, he healeth, he's going to do it. I see the healing upon you there. I see deliverance upon you there. Look, look at verse 4. Verse 4 tells us, he says in verse 4, he redeemeth my life. He redeemed your life today in Jesus' name. And that life will be profitable. And that life will be progressive. And that life will be useful in Jesus' name. Because he forgives and then after that he heals and then he redeems he redeems your life from all destruction who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies he will do it for you i said he will do it for you and then he tells us in verse 5 he says in verse 5 he satisfies thy mouth with good things no good thing will he withhold from any of us in jesus name satisfaction 
abundance the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy but jesus said i have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly abundant life satisfactory life overflowing life will come to every one of us in jesus name he will satisfy whatever you are asking from the Lord, whatever you are demanding from the Lord. Satisfaction is in Him. Abundant provision is in Him because He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And anything you are demanding today, anything you are asking today, He is able and is willing. In my life, he is able and is willing. In your life, he is able and is willing. He will not fail. That's why he says, when you come to the Lord to pray, believe that those things you have asked for, that the Lord has granted them, and it shall be yours in Jesus' name. When there is life, there is hope. You're still alive, and because you're still alive, he is the one that protected your life and preserved your life to be here until this day and he says whatever you ask it will grant unto you whatever you demand it will grant unto you there will be satisfaction in your life there will be satisfaction in my life because God is still on the throne and what he has promised is going to fulfill who satisfied my mouth with good things so that the youth is renewed like the eagles Give me a good amen there. You know, if you're feeling weary and weak and tired, it's like I should be sleeping now. I'm so worn out. And day you come to the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. You will walk, you'll not be weary. You will run and you will not faint. And then everything that is lost in your life, anything that is, you know, gone out of your life, the virtue and the power and the grace and the strength and the vitality and the positive attitude you ought to have anything that has gone down the Lord is going to supply it in your life today in Jesus name it will renew my youth like that of the eagle it will renew my youth like that of the eagle he renew your life are you ready He'll replenish your life. Are you ready? He'll revive your life. Are you ready? And he'll bring life and vitality into your life. Even today in Jesus' name. Where are you? Why don't you rise up and make this time a time to open your heart unto the Lord and a time to say, Lord, here I am. I know the promises you have given and I'm going to be a partaker, a beneficiary of all those promises you have made. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and tell him that he says he will renew your youth, he will renew your life. Let him do it. You are not just looking here and there you are concentrating now on the Lord and you're giving yourself afresh and you are surrendering your life afresh unto the Lord and you are saying, oh Lord, here am I, do what you have said, it will do it in Jesus' name. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you commit yourself and that you will sing unto the Lord and you will praise His holy name. There's a determination. There is a fixation in your heart and there is a diligence in your life that you are going to praise the Lord, you are going to honor the Lord, you are going to sing unto the Lord. My heart is fixed to Lord, my heart is fixed, my mind is fixed to Lord, my heart, my mind is fixed. Daniel purposed in his heart, Daniel purposed in his heart that will not defile himself. His heart was fixed, his mind was fixed, it was focused on the Lord. The same thing if you're a true believer. The same thing if you have come to taste the grace of God. Your heart is peace. You have a purpose of heart. You are going to keep on honoring the Lord. And you are going to keep on praising the name of the Lord. And then you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, search me and know my heart today. Search me and know my heart, I pray. And see, if there be any wicked thing in me, cleanse me and purge me that I may go in the path of 
righteousness, the character of a transformed believer. Lord, do another transformation and do a greater transformation and do a higher transformation in my life. I want to have that character, the character that is recognized in heaven that anywhere I am, my light is shining. Anywhere I am, the goodness of God is reflected in my life that people may see my good works and glorify my Father who is in heaven. That you will be a companion of the people that trust the Lord, a companion of the people that fear the Lord, a companion, a friend, a fellowship of the people who love the Lord, who fear the Lord, who honor the Lord, who obey the Lord. You are not going to be a companion of backsliders, a, a companion of wicked people, a companion of graceless people, a companion of godless people. But your friends, the people around you will be the people that love the Lord and the people that honor the Lord and the people that fear the Lord and be companion of the people that fear the Lord and be companion of the people that obey the word of the Lord. And I myself, I made his to obey your commandment. I made his that I will walk in the way of the Lord and I will not be a compromiser. I will not be a corrupter. Any corruption that provokes the Lord, that corruption will not attach itself to me. The corruption of murmuring, not me. The corruption of tempting the Lord, not me. The corruption of idolatry, not me. The corruption of fornication, not me. The corruption of the sins and the, of the world of worldliness, not me. You are going to follow the Lord without corruption. You are going to follow the Lord without any compromise. You will stand like Daniel stood. You will stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, Abednego stood. You will stand like Paul I stood. You will stand like Peter and John, like this stood. Where I be right in the sight of God to obey you more than God judge ye. But we cannot but obey that which we have known and when they saw their boldness when they saw their courage they took knowledge of them that they had been with the lord let that be your lifestyle no corruption no corruption no corruption and no compromise in your life and then remember the covenant salvation through that covenant remember the covenant sanctification holiness through that covenant remember the covenant the mind of christ given unto us through that covenant remember the covenant and the law of god is reaching in our heart and everywhere we go as we pray unto the lord we're praying on the basis of the covenant and we know that that covenant will be fulfilled in our lives remember the benefits of the covenant salvation is there forgiveness is there and conversion is there transformation is there sanctification is there holiness is there healing is there deliverance is there and multiplied blessings are there seeking for us the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you your prayers are answered in jesus name you will not go back home as you came. Yeah. Addition in your life. Yeah. Multiplication in your life. Yeah. And the goodness of the Lord to satisfaction in your life. In Jesus' name. Yeah. You believe? Yeah. You accept that? Yeah. You know for a certainty that there is satisfaction in your life from today? Yeah. What are you? Wonderful. Wonders in your life, goodness in your life, victory in your life in Jesus' name. That thing that brought you down before will not bring you down anymore. Abundance, satisfaction, goodness, grace of God, abundant life, abundant provision. Abundant goodness of God, Father, in Jesus' name.
we thank you for what you have revealed unto us lord i pray any guilt any condemnation forgive your people and wipe the condemnation away in jesus name new life in everyone abundant life in everyone and the provision of calvary of pardon of peace of purity of power i pray it will come upon every life right now in jesus name lord i pray feebleness take away weakness take away every sickness whatever name take that sickness away in jesus name healing for everyone health for everyone strength for everyone i pray lord what they were not able to do before they'll begin to do right now and i pray lord as they go out of the service every step of the way one two as they take those steps blessing and benefit blessing and benefit blessing and benefit upon every life in jesus name and the praise of the Lord will never leave your mouth. Testimony will never leave your mouth. And the goodness of God will follow you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. Now let the weak say, let the poor say, let those who are downtrodden say, I'm uplifted. The Lord lifts you up and you stand on the top of your mountain in sunshine all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, you will walk, you will not be weary. You will run, you will not faint. And everything you need at every crossroad, every point in time in your life, the Lord supply abundantly in Jesus' name. It is done. It is done. You are blessed. I am blessed. In Jesus' name we pray.